you can find. Okay. So welcome to the December meeting of the PB3 Landmarks Committee. Um, somewhere I have a little list. Let's see, I'll share my file here for a minute. You see in it? Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Yeah. So if there are, I don't see any, and we might have one guest here. If you are a guest and not a presenter or a member of the committee, please enter your name and affiliation in the chat room so we have an attendance record. Mm -hmm. um, we're going, our first item is to approve last meeting's minutes. And after that, we're going to discuss tonight's C of A application. So the application will be presented. The committee will then discuss it. And then members of the public can ask questions or make statements. If you wish to ask a question, raise your hand. To do this, click on participants in the taskbar. At the bottom of the part participant list, you will see an icon to raise your hand. Uh, so then we will do our resolution. And we have added a new business item to our agenda because of the urgent situation with the Middle Collegiate Church and the Isaac Hopper House. So let's stop the share, go back here. So see, there's, I think, three of us here. David, I see you're having trouble with the audio. Um, no, uh, ah. Aren't you? I can't hear you. I heard him just a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he briefly. Uh, so, um, our, of our, let's let's uh, let's see. If you're not on the committee, please mute yourself. And that means you, Deborah. Yeah. Um, so, Carolyn and David and Linda. Does anyone object to the approval of the meeting, the minutes from October? No. Okay, they're so approved. Uh, let us move on to our C of A application. Um, and our speaker, I think, is Ms. Hunter Burkett, correct? Close enough. Susan, okay. Yeah, please present, pronounce your name for me. I don't want to keep mispronouncing it. Misha Hunter Burkett. Thank you, Misha. Okay, so you can go ahead and uh, begin explaining to us why we're doing what we haven't seen the whole application. We just got it. So. Um, okay. Did you receive the email with the attachments? Yes. yes, I have the attachments. Okay. If you could just put up the drawings okay. um, from that package. Okay. That would be most helpful. Hold on a second while I find it. Yep. Okay. Um, and it's the, um, it's labeled T200914 LS8 LPC underscore set one. <laughs> okay, let me, let me get the list up first and then. Let's, yeah, yeah. Okay. T, yes. Yeah, if you can find that. Okay, I did find it. I am going to now share it. Any luck Fantastic. At all. I, I seem to, maybe I've slightly improved at sharing screens. Let's see, there it is. Okay. So okay, like all right. Uh, no, but that's okay. This is um, this is a cover memo. I was hoping for the drawings. Uh, I can um, just tell me what I need to find. Yeah, I'm just going to go back to that. Sorry. Does it say 2008? Oh, sorry. 20. Can you do this one? Uh -huh. 200914 Eldridge. Set one. I misspoke. I'm sorry. Set one. Oh, I don't see that. I see some things named 2018. Oh, there it is. I see it. 
It's a PDF. Start my share. Start my share. Find that PDF. Okay. Does that do That's it? That's it. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. There's that so, building. That's it's a beautiful building. Um, so I'll, I'll briefly uh, introduce um, my name is Misha Hunter Burkett. I'm representing Lee Saltzman Architects, and we've been retained by the museum at Eldred Street um, for a number of, of security upgrades um, at the museum. The museum um, received uh, a uh, an assessment from the uh, New York City Police Department um, identifying a number of vulnerabilities. Um, particularly uh, for potential uh, terrorism. And um, the museum, hello? Hello? The museum then subsequently um, applied for and received a number of grants um, at the state level and the federal level uh, to implement these needed uh, security upgrades. They also retain the services of a, a security consultant uh, that would help them in navigating how best um, to to address the the vulnerabilities that NYPD had had identified. And the uh, the building, of course, is uh, a New York City landmark. Uh, it's listed on the state and national registers of historic places, and it's also a national historic landmark. And the building was built 1886-87 by Herder Brothers. Um, in the um, Moorish and Gothic revival styles. And so we applied, um, we made uh, the application to the Landmarks Commission, as you can see, in September, and with the goal of trying to do as much as possible at the staff level, looking carefully at Landmarks uh, rules and guidelines uh, for health, safety, and security upgrading. And um, almost everything that, that had been presented to the Landmarks Commission, um, applying you know, uh, different, uh, different measures, um, met with the Landmarks staff's rules. However, um, two specific scope items uh, were found to not meet um, the LPC staff requirements and must come before the LPC commissioners at public hearing. And, Presently, um, the project is uh, scheduled uh, for the January 5th, 2021 um, public hearing. And in advance of that, um, the, um, the team, we are coming to the community board, uh, to your committee. And then I understand that um, the committee uh, would then present a resolution to the full board and that the resolution from the full board could then be um, submitted to the Landmarks Commission, ideally before the January 5th um, public hearing, so that um, the advisory comments of the community board um, may be known to the commissioners um, at the time of the correct. hearing. Mm -hmm. Yep, fantastic. So uh, the two scope items that are under your review today um, include the installation of two security poles that would be five inches in diameter, uh, 12 feet high, um, black, and one would be located at the north area way and one would be located at the south area way. So that would be within the bounds of the existing area way fencing. Um, but as it happens, well, sometimes with older buildings, um, the the location of the two security poles, <coughs> excuse me, um, is located outside of the property line. So in addition to applying to the Landmarks Commission for the security poles, um, we also um, went to the Department of Transportation um, and their revocable consents department. And because we were able to prove uh, uh, that the areaway fencing uh, was in existence before 1940, and I have in the package of, of documents that were emailed to you um, 
1905 uh, drawing, elevation drawing of the building, um, DOT said that they would not have uh, any comment and wouldn't require um, a, a revocable consent to be issued uh, for the two security poles. So that's one part. And then uh, the other part is, um, as happens oftentimes in, in urban situations where um, uh, buildings are quite close together, um, in this case, um, the, the museum has um, two fire escapes, one at the south area way, one at the north area way. And uh, due to the, um, the close um, concentration of, of other um, buildings uh, that have been developed and over time at different heights, um, there are some opportunities for uh, people to to uh, jump onto the fire escape and then uh, potentially get access to the interior of the building. And so um, one of the recommendations was to uh, of the security consultant was to uh, respond. And so um, we our office working with a structural engineer uh, devised some anti climb. Um, installations that would be attached in a manner uh, to the fire escapes to, to um, restrict or deter um, people that might want to climb onto the fire escapes. So, so this request, as I said, it boils down to two um, security poles in the front and then uh, four uh, anti-climb measures at the fire escapes very selectively located, so not covering the entirety of the fire escapes, but just at very strategic locations where it's most vulnerable. And that is what is before you today. So if you'd like to advance the slide, I can just walk you through the drawings and then um, we can put up some photographs so you can see. And uh, then I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, that's great. Um, may I ask if you've <clears throat> experienced anybody trying to break in already? They have. They have, and and one of the uh, stained glass windows was damaged. Oh, um, and this this happened last year, and of course we immediately um, applied to the Landmarks Commission for the um, stabilization um, a temporary um, panel uh, to to protect, and then engage the services of a um, stained glass uh, consultant um, that specializes in stained glass window repair. So it wasn't on the primary facade, but it was on the area way, uh, on the south area way, and and that, you know, uh, corresponds with um, the need for the uh, security measures um, that have been so far um, identified by NYPD, and we hope to, to be able to get the permits and then implement these these upgrades and and protect this this uh, iconic building. So um, yeah. So just really quickly, just so you can locate the building, um, you can see it in the plan on the upper right hand corner, exactly, exactly there. So just so that you know where it is on Eldred Street. And um, if you can advance to the next. Can't read that. These are um, Department of Buildings notes. You don't need to, right. to look at that. The next one, yeah. Okay, so this is a basement plan. If you can go to the next one. Okay, so um, I wish I had a, a pointer, but I don't. Anyway, if you can um, circle your, uh, take your cursor down to the front, um, towards the front gate, okay, a little lower down, a little lower, yeah, a little lower to the right. Okay, so you see where that gate is? I mean, this one right. That swings here. out, exactly, yes, exactly. And right to the left of that, is the proposed location of the pole. So you can see it um, might be a little bit small, but, but that's the little, there's a little circle that's indicated there in plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this location was identified by the security consultant as the best possible location for this pole. And the pole, um, which would be painted black and metal, um, and uh, we identified um, the, the Vega a manufacturer, it's a, a specific um, product, um, and it would support 
a, um, a light um, that would be able to illuminate the facade and a um, motion sensitive um, camera. Um, so that location, as I said, was specifically chosen by the security consultant. And then if you go to the um, exact um, south, so at the top of the drawing, also right next to the um, areaway fence. Mm -hmm. And the exact same um, installation is proposed. There would just be these two. Okay. So, All right. And then poles, these poles wouldn't be barriers, right? They're meant to, to illuminate and have a camera. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. Then we tried to tuck them as much as possible into the extreme corner, you know, um, to, to try to not impede um, any egress um, points because obviously these are. Um, egress corridors uh, for anyone in the sanctuary that exits through the fire escape um, and would need to then exit out onto the street. So we can't have a pole that could possibly be an obstruction to anyone as they're seeking to flee the building in a case of any emergency. The, the other uh, thing to point out on this plan are the locations of the fire escape. So at the south area way, which is at the top of the drawing, Yep, exactly. So you can see the fire escape um, as it goes up and then turns the corner and comes to the north. Yeah. So there's, exactly. So there's two, two locations on this fire escape where these anti-climb measures are proposed. And you can see that um, the adjacent conditions on the south, there is an existing building um, with a, a lower um, one story appendage to it. Um, so one could jump from that roof onto the fire escape over the, the fencing at the property of Eldridge um, and then jump onto the fire escape and then try to gain access to the building. Um, the, <clears throat> the southeast corner um, is, is a vacant, uh, or I shouldn't say vacant, is undeveloped. It's a parking lot uh, for um, uh, I think delivery trucks for a type of grocery. Um, so there's, there's, yeah, yeah, there's a variety of different conditions here. And then if you can follow your cursor down, um, going in the northward direction, we'll get to the other fire escape at the north portion of the areaway. Exactly, exactly. So here we have a number of conditions. The building immediately um, to the north um, is built up and the rear terrace um, of, uh, it's an apartment building, and the rear terrace of one of the residential units um, aligns with um, the fire escape. <laughs> so one could easily jump over the parapet wall of the terrace and then uh, gain access to the fire escape and then if you wish to try to exit an entry into the building, um, the sanctuary. So these are the um, locations. I just wanna make sure that everyone is um, clear about the interventions that are proposed and where they are proposed. Um, does anyone have any questions there? Was the fire escape initially installed to provide egress from the women's balcony? Ah, oh, good question. Um, I think not because this location is the um, is location of the main sanctuary. This is the floor of the main sanctuary. So the door, you can see the two points of access to the fire escape. Oh, sorry. This, this uh, it does provide to both, sorry. So this floor, you can see the door there and then the exactly opposite on the south side, you can see a door that accesses onto the fire escape. So these are two landings. And then we're gonna go to the next plan, which is the balcony plan, the women's balcony. And that's where the fire escape continues up to the balcony level. And so the women from um, on that level could then access the fire escape from that higher level 
and then continue down. So the men would get onto the fire escape um, historically in this um, first floor and the women would gain access in the balcony. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are, and the doors accessing the fire escapes in all conditions um, are, have stained glass panels. Um, and uh, we, you know, as part of a staff level um, application, um, those stained glass panels uh, would have some uh, type of blast proof, blast proof uh, film um, applied, but that's not part of the um, application before the commissioners. Okay. Okay. So can you go to the next, then we'll go through the elevations. Oh, yeah, this is helpful. okay. Yep. Here we go. So um, uh, the elevation shows you the two poles that are proposed. So you again, from the plan, you can see one exactly at the north, one at the south, um, 12 feet high, um, five inch diameter metal painted black, um, mounted with um, a, a, a light and um, and a security camera, okay? Where are and they then, in relation to the sidewalk? They are, they are um, not on the sidewalk. So um, I don't know if you would like to go back to the plan, the first floor, the main floor plan. Mm -hmm. And we'll just show again. So, so um, if you could just here. point, yes, the sidewalk is there, exactly. And then you can see the boundary of the fencing, the areaway fence, okay? And the gates so that you can gain access to the areaways, you can gain access to um, the steps going down to enter the museum, you can gain access to the steps going up to the sanctuary. Does that help you, sir? Uh, well, I still don't see the location of the poles. So I guess I'll be in the middle of this, right? Yeah, yes. One at the south and one at the north, sir. And so there's room for access to the area where the pole does not uh, impede any of that access? No, um, a great care was taken to find um, a diameter of pole and also to find um, the, the location for the poles to be tucked in as closely as possible so that there would be, not be any obstruction. As I said earlier, um, these areaways are the emergency paths of egress. So if one was um, fleeing the building in the case of an emergency, uh, we cannot have any obstruction uh, to anyone as they are trying to flee the building through the areaways and onto the sidewalk. Uh, it, so, it, um, it's also the ADA access, isn't it? Uh, the the north portion, yes, is yeah. is the yeah. ADA. So uh, as as you can imagine, we had um, very very um, uh, specific uh, size limitations and and um, dimensional limitations, um, but we we responded to the recommendation of the security consultant that the museum engaged in placing um, these poles in these two locations. And we identified um, the manufacturer of the poles um, and security lighting and camera that would mount onto the pole. And again, the goal is to try to find a pole that is um, going to have a good longevity, a good life to it. It's manufactured and made uh, well um, that the finish is not going to deteriorate over time, that it's going to be, you know, a solid installation. But at the same time, we wanted it to be something that would not call great attention to itself and try to um, recede somewhat in the background and, and, um, and yet be functional and utilitarian. You may recall that um, Trinity Church on Broadway a number of years ago installed uh, something similar um, with with lights and cameras on, mounted on poles, um, and and uh, and so this is this is some something similar, um, but but not as many, um, and certainly uh, there's not a, there's not a need and there's not the space. <laughs> 
So uh, what is hopefully that answers your question. What is the pavement in that area? Ah, at the um, north portion of the areaway where there's the ADA access, uh, we know that there are a number of pavers that are bluestone that would need to be lifted to accommodate the electrical conduit run and then uh, replaced, um, not <clears throat> reinstalled, I should say, reinstalled um, once the electrical conduit feed into the building um, has been established. Um, and then at the uh, south area way, it's a combination of, uh, I think there's a number of different things going on. Um, I think there was concrete. Um, we don't know all of the, the paving conditions there. It seemed, it's quite built up. It's not at the grade level. You have to um, sort of hoist yourself up <clears throat> they're not steps, so it's a little bit more difficult to access uh, than the north area way. But but the goal is to be as minimally impactful as possible, um, and to uh, return the um, you know the bluestone pavers um, where they exist um, to the condition that they were in prior to the installation. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, it does. Thank you. So let's look at this one okay. time in the west front. I think this is a good good view of it. So this, these are our poles. It looks like this one is allowing more space than this one is. In the drawing, they, they appear to be in front of the gate. Am I reading that correctly? Well, the way that the section is cut, none of the areaway fencing is shown. So it's to try to, the, 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 the elevation is cut in a, in a manner that does not show any of the areaway fencing or gates in order to be clear about the location of the poles. So behind the pole, what are those vertical lines? Ah, behind the pole, there are two proposed gates um, that would that we found um, clearly shown on the historic drawing from circa 1905 and the goal is to install new areaway gates that um, match the historic um, elevation drawing and those would be reviewed at the lpc staff level it's part of a whole package of security upgrades uh, at the museum so what is before you today are the two security poles and then the anti-climb measures at the fire escapes. Well, but aren't there existing gates? There is one gate at the south area way. There is not a gate at the north area way. So what would happen to the existing gate? The existing gate is not historic uh -huh. and it is, um, we don't know the provenance of it. We don't know how it was installed. It's in deteriorated condition, but has no historic merit. And um, the gates that we are proposing under a staff level are trying to um, recall the historic condition based on the documentation. It's very confusing. These CFAs that get broken up into staff level and commission level, I'm sure they are to you. I understand. Too. Yeah, I'm sure the uh, well, I try to keep it clear. So it's <laughs> I try to keep it it's clear. It's helpful to have an explanation because of the context of what you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I provided the memo that gives you the full picture. Um, and, and then that way you understand the context of, of all of the scope that's proposed. Yeah, that's great. Thank Would you me. like to go to the north elevation? Sure. And then we can do the south elevation and talk about the anti-climb measures. And then you can also see the poles in section. And here, um, oh, sir, you yeah. can see the location of the pole. And then you can see <clears throat> the plane of the um, areaway fencing and gates that's just beyond it. So hopefully that helps you to understand the relationship, not only in plan, um, but also in this elevation. And then moving on um, to the anti-climb measures. Um, the concept here, as I understand it, 
uh, from the structural engineer, um, old structures engineering. Um, they do a lot of um, engineering consulting work um, on landmark structures. And uh, so they said that this concept of sort of a, an anti-climb mesh, very lightweight metal mesh, um, that's from Europe, um, is used at zoos. Um, I guess <laughs> How there are people that try to either climb into a, um, an enclosure for an animal or what have you. So this is to, to just deter um, people from climbing. And so they said, well, why not try to do that similar, similarly here? We want to um, discourage anyone from trying to climb um, onto the fire escape. And as I said, these, these um, anti-climb measures are, um, you know, they're not going to prevent somebody with metal cutters and, you know, whatever they want to do, but, but it would certainly be a deterrent um, for anybody that was trying to gain access onto the fire escape. And so um, the, the, um, the intention is to do something in an extremely light metal mesh um, so as not to, um, you know, um, compromise the visibility of the historic landmark, um, and and certainly not to um, diminish any light coming into the building um, through the the windows beyond. Um, but at the same time, create this this anti climb uh, measure. So, um, so you can see uh, at this is at the north area way, um, and um, the uh, and it turns the corner and um, and goes up uh, on the east elevation. Could you uh, go to the south elevation next, and I'll just talk about that one. Okay, thank you. So um, here. At the south elevation, we have the condition um, of both that adjacent building immediately to the south, as well as the um, um, driveway or our parking area uh, for the uh, grocery delivery. And um, so there are a number of conditions. The the areaway fencing is going to be um, uh, replaced. Uh, with new fencing as part of a staff level application, but the um, the um, anti climb measures at the fire escapes um, are not something that the staff can do uh, at staff level to approve, and uh, so it must be presented to the uh, commissioners at the public hearing. So that's that's it. And then, if you would like to go to the east rear elevation, we can show you that. Mm -hmm. These are, these are visions of this building that we don't ordinarily get. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. And we'll show you some photos as well. Um, so you can see the anti-climb measures, um, you know, again, just being very selective in their placement. We don't need to uh, cover the entirety of the fire escape, but just where there are vulnerable points. Yep, yep, exactly, okay. exactly. That's it. Clever. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. And then um, let's see here. If you'd like to close the drawing, unless you'd like to look at the lighting details. Why not? Oh. These are the, uh, there's a detail of the pole on the left, mm -hmm. lower left. Mm -hmm. This is the Vega pole. And then uh, the light that would be mounted onto it. This mm -hmm. is special housing. And the, there's, a, there's also a bracket mount for the, the camera uh, that would be uh, specified by the security consultant. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's the package. Um, yeah. So what would you like next? Let's see if I can find it. I'd love to show the photos and the drawing, the 1905 drawing. If you could, if you could show those, that would be fantastic. Okay, so I see a bunch of images. There's one that's circa 1905 at the front of the label. Do you see it? I think so. Okay. Images take a little while to open on my computer. I understand. Is 
bit of annoying when all you want to do is look at it. You don't need to edit it. <laughs> I understand. Do you have a photograph that not necessarily on this building, but a photograph that shows the mesh if you looked at it from some distance? What it no. appears to look like? No, we, we, we did not prepare any renderings. Um, we did not prepare any renderings. Um, if you like, I can, I can email you um, the um, product data sheet from the manufacturer so you could see it. Uh, we also watched a very humorous video of someone attempting to climb and failing miserably, mm. but I didn't include that. Okay, so this is this is the circa 1905 image that I wanted you to see. Sorry, drawing, and um, so you can see that there were um, there were uh, areaway fencing, right. the gate. Sorry, mm -hmm. yeah, and unfortunately, um, the 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 um, the areaway fencing and gates all feature an X brace motif, which um, all of that areaway fencing was replaced subsequently. Oh, I need to send you the other image. Hold on, give me a second. Because that, um, just a moment. And then you can see, um, the existing uh, areaway fencing and gate condition. Sorry about this. So which one do you want? Yeah, I'm just going to email it to you. Just give me one okay. second. <laughs> this is fun. I I I I I I'm grateful that you were um, being so accommodating. No problem. Let's see here. Okay, so this, this is going to be a link. Hopefully, you can open it. It's circa 1887. This is a building with just fascinating history. Um, as I said earlier, the building was. Um, designated by the Landmarks Commission in 1980, um, and then listed on the state and national registers of historic places and a, as a national historic landmark as well. And the, the museum, of course, prides itself in its history. And um, there's the, the image that I just sent you um, is one that is, um, is uh, mag magnified uh, quite largely and, and as part of their exhibitry. Can you see it? Yeah, I'm just saving it. Okay. What would you say the size of the openings of the mesh is? Oh, that's a good question. Give me a moment. And what call is it metal? Is the mesh metal or some other? Metal, metal. It's metal. And what mm -hmm. color is that metal? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I think it's sort of, um, let's see. I can only do one thing at a time. So let me see if I can find that, that metal <laughs> and while the image is coming through, OK? I just shared it. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Is the mesh? Oh, there we go. Yeah. So there you go. You can see um, the areaway fencing and then the um, the rail. Sorry, the uh, gates. Yeah, and the gates at the south and the north. Mm -hmm. So um, those are again just very simple with spikes on top you know, just to um, be very, very simple and try to not compete 
um, in any way with the um, very ornamental and decorative ironwork. We just want this to be something that's more of a background piece, um, very utilitarian and functional. Of course, um, as I said before, these are paths of emergency egress. Um, so there are panic bars that will be installed um, on the inside faces of both of these gates. Um, so in the event of emergency, um, that all one would have to do is to push, um, push the panic, panic bar um, and the door would open, um, the gate would open. The, the gates um, certainly are um, designed with hardware to try to restrict anyone from trying to um, tamper um, with, with the operation of the gates. Um, so the goal is to, um, again, just do this in a very simple uh, black finish um, for, for these two gates. But I just wanted to show you that. Um, so you can see. Okay. And then, sir, I'm just going to look up the um, the specification for the um, uh, for the mesh. Just give me a moment. Is it steel mesh? It's stainless steel mesh, but just uh, I'm just going to try to call it up. Just give me a second. It's my computer seems to be going a bit slow today. Join the crowd. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. All right. I'm in the images file. Let me just get to the drawings file. Okay. Okay. Anti-climb fence. There we go. It's missing. Um, hmm. Let me just see if I can. Hmm. I'm sorry, I can't seem to find it, sir. Um, I'll just go through a quick um, email search and just see if I can put my finger on it. Just give me a moment. Be right back. It appears that the artist's original conception, the architect's conception included um, lanterns out front. Mm. So it did. As part of the ironwork. Mm -hmm. That is not proposed here. Certainly. Okay, I have the, I have, it's called Jacob Webnet. I'm just going to send you the, the uh, document. Just give me a moment. Okay. And you can see it. Okay, hopefully you can see it. hasn't come around yet. Okay. Let me know when it does.
Well, the others came right away. Well, so it goes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it will come. Yeah, I mean, me too. Yeah. So, you know, just to discuss mm. a little bit. Let me bit try one more time. Great. Um, it seems to me that these solutions you're proposing, first of all, they're essential for security. And, you know, before, I think before you joined us, we were talking about security issues in various landmark buildings and, and in my case, in the park that I look after. And they seem to be related to this pandemic time and the fact that people are going crazy, um, things that they never used to do. So it's really a shame. Yes. I resent it. Please let me know if you got it. Okay, so far not. Okay. Yeah, I can say that earlier in our conversation, I, when I served on the Landmarks Commission staff um, in the Preservation Department and one of the special desk assignments that I had for eight years was doing design and regulatory review for religious properties, churches, synagogues um, throughout the city. And um, after 9-11, obviously, there were a number of um, landmark religious properties that um, the NYPD uh, did uh, evaluations of in terms of their vulnerability for potential terrorism. So uh, certainly this, this subject has been on my mind for a number of years. Um, and, um, you know, we, we would like to hope, <laughs> you know, that making very surgical, um, specific um, installations and, and upgrades in a way that, that tries to meet the, the needs of the security um, uh, requirements and, and then also to be respectful of the landmark site is really what is yeah. at least our goal. So yeah. this, is the, this is the product uh, data sheet from the manufacturer. It's a Jacob or Jakob uh, webnet. Wow. Um, so you can see it. Um, there's 84 pages, so I don't know if you need to look through all of that, but <laughs> um, um, probably not. But, but if you would like to look through it, you certainly may. Um, and, and you're welcome to go on to their website, where, as I said, they have a, a quite um, interesting video of someone attempting to try to climb it and not being successful. And, and I can say as somebody who is a um, climbing, a person that climbs walls at the gym, <laughs> I, you know, I, I would think that uh, this would be quite interesting. We, we had, our office had worked as the preservation architect for the, the high bridge uh, rehabilitation, which opened in uh, 2015. And uh, this type of um, very similar type of um, web mesh, web, metal mesh, stainless steel metal mesh uh, was used um, on the high bridge um, to supplement the historic railing, uh, which was not high enough to meet um, DOT uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. So uh, certainly I'm familiar with this type of, of metal mesh, um, but had never seen it in an application like this at fire escapes. But um, landmarks, when they looked at it, they said, you know, we're really impressed. This looks very light. Um, it looks like, you know, you're trying to allow for the, the building to, to still be very legible and read, mm -hmm. um, which was our intention, um, but to, to provide a, a type of deterrent um, from anyone that might try to climb onto the property. And you, because it is on the side of the building, it's not so, you know, if you had to put something like this on the front, it would be really a problem. But, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Carolyn, this is what, what we need on PS64. Right, it sure is. All right, any questions, folks? Not, not public yet, still, still committee. Mitchell, Carolyn, David, you could, put, you could put it in the chat if you have a question. No, I don't have any further questions. Okay, no, it's all thought out. All right, let's hear from the public. Uh, 
I'm, I'm seeing you without seeing your hand. So go ahead, Deborah. You're muted. Can you unmute yourself? This is madness. I look at the settings and it says allow participants to unmute themselves. Well, have, put your put your question in the chat. I would like to have the power to unmute. I don't know why I don't, but it says the host has to unmute me, but the host does not seem to have this capability. Can try. Nope. All I can do is ask you to unmute. Wow. I got it. That well, she put it. She put it in the chat. Okay. She wants to well, know how much taller the pole is than the areaway fence. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have an exact answer to that question, but if we can look back to the um, to the drawings, Linda, if you could kindly post those again. The PowerPoint with the drawings. Mm. Didn't. The drawings, yes, if you could please do that. And then if we can advance to the um, north elevation, and that shows the relationship of the areaway fencing and gates to the proposed pole. I think the you'll see the relationship there. I'm looking, looking. I, can, I, I can, seem to have closed it. I have to find it again. Yeah. Linda. Sandra's saying that she's had her hand raised. I see that. I'll okay. get to you, Sandra. This is the thing we don't want. Um, remind me what it was called again. Yes, absolutely. Um, it was 20-09-14. Uh, and um, Got it. and you'll see it, Eldridge set one. Yep, I see it. Do you see it? Yep. Okay. There you go. Okay, so if you could advance to um, the north elevation, so keep going down. Yep, north elevation, if you could go to there. Okay, so you'll see um, the, um, if you can, maybe if you can make it a little bit bigger, is there a way to do that? It looks like you've got a plus sign on the top. Mm -hmm. Do you see the plus sign on the top? Oh, this guy uh, left. Yep, yep. If you can make that, okay. Press that a few times. Okay. Yeah. Scroll okay. Down and then, so you can if you can drag, yeah, exactly. Then, then we'll scroll down a little bit more, and then if you can scroll to the right, and then we can all see, or put, or somehow drag the, the draw. And there we go. There we go. Okay. So in this, um, in this drawing. You can see the uh, location of the areaway fence and gates, right? And then you can see the proposed pole. So I think the, the areaway fence and gates um, may be uh, about five feet. Um, they're somewhat tall, right? Um, this proposed pole is five inches in diameter and, um, and 12 feet high with the goal of being high enough that you um, don't allow people to try to tamper with the um, placement of the security camera. Mm -hmm. We don't want someone trying to unscrew it. Um, the whole purpose here is to be able to assist, <laughs> um, assist the museum, assist the police. Um, if there is a, an attack in the building, um, to be able to hopefully document um, the the perpetrators, okay. so um, so we want it to be a little bit tall, and and that's the goal. Um, the the dashed line adjacent to it is the property line, so it's not 
something else that's being proposed. It's just that we wanted to graphically show the location of the property line. As I talked about earlier, we found out, you know, that in placing this pole, these two poles, um, that they would be beyond the property line. And we did apply to uh, the New York City DOT revocable consent department um, uh, asking for their um, determination as to whether or not a revocable consent would be required. And they said, no, because you have demonstrated that the area way fencing and gates existed prior to 1940, um, that they would uh, not need to issue a permit uh, for the proposed poles. However, um, they are obviously required uh, for permit from the Landmarks Commission. Mm -hmm. But I can, I can, I can have um, someone scale the off at the office tomorrow um, the the dimensional difference in height between the top of the existing area way and the top of the pole, so that you would have that dimension if you would like. Mm -hmm. can, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, is there any consideration to not making those poles black? It just seems that they might be quite noticeable at five inches diameter, two black poles on either side of the facade. I don't know. You know. There's, oh, there's only one, one pole on each side. Um, yeah. And the all of the metalwork uh, is all painted black. So the goal was to try to use that same color Mm -hmm. um, so it would be sympathetic with the other metal metal work. Mm -hmm. Sandra, and don't forget, I mean, there are, there is uh, a building immediately adjacent to this uh, to the north. Um, so um, you know, you, you're you're going to uh, the context of this drawing is somewhat um, misleading in the sense that you. We're showing this for clarity about the building and proposed um, modifications, but always remember that this is um, a very a densely built up uh, portion of the Lower East Side. Um, so, so you would see this as part of a very lively um, uh, street uh, pedestrian experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sandra, did you have a question? Yes, Sandra. It's not, huh? Put your hand down. Okay. Um, anybody else have a question? Discussion. Okay. So, what do we think hey, about this question. committee? Uh, Linda, she did put her question in the chat. Can you read it to me? I can't see it. Yeah. Are the cameras going to focus on the entrances or on the gates only as a deterrent? Uh, the, the cameras would focus um, on, um, I actually don't know. <laughs> the cameras would focus where the security consultant um, suggest that they be focused. I would think on the doors, but again, I, I'm not privy to where they would be focused. That would be a security um, decision. We are not the security consultant. Okay. Sandra, can you try to unmute yourself one more time? Hmm. Guess not. We can't see you either. Okay, uh, so let's, uh, committee, let's discuss what we want to do here. Uh, given that the building is a New York City landmark, a national historic landmark, I assume also on the State Register of Historic Places and is a um, architectural and cultural 
architecturally and culturally significant um, aspect of the community as it had been for over a century. It needs all of the security that can be provided within the context of a historic building and that these measures should be endorsed by the community board. Sounds good. Can you, can you sort of say that again? I'm putting a where is in, whereas in here. I said, whereas this building is not only a New York City landmark, but also it's a national landmark. National Historic Landmark. Okay, and also a National Historic Landmark. As well as a architectural and cultural touchstone of the community and has been such for over a hundred years. These security <laughs> measures. <laughs> I should put this up so people can see it. See if I could share it. Then you can see me typing slowly. There it is. So I had put a couple of things in and I'm putting you, what you said right here, where the build as the building is not only a New York City landmark, but also a national historic landmark, as well as an architectural and cultural touchstone of the community. Yeah. And then we say, therefore, mm -hmm. maybe we should just say that, that this, something about the security requirement here. Um, Something like that. So, okay, so Mitchell, go. Be resolved the community supports the proposed installation of these security members measures okay go on. that's it the only other thing i could think of is you might want to add something about the experience of rakins and therefore the need for these security measures Yes. Um, building as experienced security violations and damage. Can I can I ask that you not put in writing about this, um, uh, my my concern about speaking about how vulnerable the building is. Um, Bad idea, huh? In in print, I, yeah. I just I, I'm a little bit nervous about it. Um, yeah, and I don't think it's necessary. I think you've made a very strong case. I and and um, I. Yeah, I, I think your whereas are, are, are very, very strong. Very good. Very You've been speaking with commission staff and were there any, any concerns they raised that we ought to slip in here? Uh, as I said, uh, they were um, very, uh, they, they questioned the location of the two poles and when we indicated to them this was the a direction from the security consultant again um, to to achieve the the best location. Uh, they were um, they didn't have any any response to that other than okay we understand that that's the best location and obviously that there would not be any um, obstruction potential obstruction. 
uh, to the emergency egress. Uh, so they were uh, very pleased with that. And they were also pleased um, with the lightness of the metal mesh. Um, oh, we didn't look at those photos. Uh, there were some photos that were taken through the, um, from the street. I don't know if you would like to see them. Why not? Would it be, oh, would it be helpful? Just Im named image this and image that? Yeah, there there are images at the at the tail end of the first attach the first email that I sent you with attachments. We could just quickly uh, skim skim through those. Let's see. Let's give this a try. See if I've got the right stuff here. Yeah. I usually would be remiss to interrupt anyone writing a. Oh, yeah, a beautifully well, written. It won't affect um, the resolution, but it's But I just thought we 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 um we did a good deep dive into drawings and and historic documentation and um and even the the web net. Um, but there were some additional photos. It can't hurt to just quickly um see them. Let's start a new share here. See if I can get this. I, I have great faith in your abilities. You've done wonderfully <laughs> well, so far. Let's look, that's the you've done wonderfully. There. I'm, I'm it's hard to be on the spot. I'm learning yeah. to do screen sharing better. It's it's easy to screw it up. I even went through a tutorial. I'm still not fast yet. Yes. At least I can do it. Okay. No, you're doing great. It, so this this one is just a um, a number of a, one of a group of photos, but you can see. Um, in the foreground, the, the parking area for this grocery uh, delivery, and there's a warehouse immediately to the right on uh, in the picture. Right. And then straight ahead, obviously, is the museum, and you can see mm -hmm. the existing gonna go. fire escape. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So you can That's see good. also that there is a, um, you know, an opportunity for someone getting on top of that low building immediately next to or low roof immediately uh -huh. next to the museum and then jumping over the area the, the the fencing and getting onto the fire escape or yeah. wherever else they wanted to get into but that that gives you one picture mm -hmm. yeah well people in i think you can press the, the arrow to the right there's a little arrow on the right that appears yeah let's see if that gives you the other okay here we go there's another shot um, giving you a little bit more, not only of the south elevation, but a little bit of the east, and then keep going. And then this gives you the view of the existing areaway fence at the south. And as I said earlier, it has no um, architectural or artistic merit. Um, it looks like it was it really doesn't something that came out of a, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, I, I dare say a, a Home Depot fence. or a, yeah, yeah. somebody needed an areaway fence, uh, yeah. a gate, and that was procured, but it, uh, mm -hmm. it does not rise to any no, level of um, do preservation. No, no, not, not something. So and then this is the view have? down the north, uh, mm -hmm. north area way. Mm -hmm. That's really narrow. And those, How wide is it's that? very narrow. It varies uh, because there are some vertical buttresses um, that in some cases it's it's quite narrow. Uh, we have it on the plan. So if you would like, I can certainly walk you through that again. You in relation these, to the fence that we see, yeah. is there a way yeah. for you to indicate where the pole would be? In the corner. So um, if you can go to, um, yeah, if you can just imagine, sorry. Can you go back to where you were? This one? I'm sorry, Linda. Yeah, go back one, one more. Advance, advance, sorry, advance one more. <laughs> where we just were at the north area way. There we go. Okay, so if you can just imagine, you can see in the very immediate foreground, the black area way fence and gate. Can you put your cursor there and then we can just, everyone can see it. Yeah. 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 And then just imagine that in that corner there, where you see the right angle of the metal, that, no, no, and tucked in the corner here, close, close to the street or the sidewalk, mm -hmm. keep bringing it closer. Yeah, yeah. So, no, we did not do a, um, 
a rendering or a, a compute like a computer generated montage. Um, we just you know have the existing condition photographs, but with I think very very detailed drawings that illustrate the intention and location um, of the two poles. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out here, you can see these very large metal light fixtures in the areaway, and all of those would be removed, and we've chosen mm -hmm. something much more discreet. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, I, that's an improvement. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> and the next door neighbor has a light. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Can't hurt to have a little more light, right? <laughs> No. Okay. Any further uh, questions, discussion before we finalize this resolution? Yeah, you said that the south um, area is elevated. Yes. So, um, will the poles be at the same height? even though the base of the pole on the south platform is already higher? Is it higher or is it the thing on a slope? The south is higher. Yeah, yeah. the south is higher than the north. Um, so if you go to the drawing, you can see on the elevation. I'm sorry, I'm asking you to jump around here, Linda. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, Zoom doesn't make this easy, I'll tell you. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It uh, has its own little ways. That, that one was 200914 uh -huh. um, LPC yeah. set one, if you can see that on the PDF. I had it. I had it. I had it. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, so oh, if we can go it. to the, you're doing great. Okay, now, where do we want to go? Okay, so, oh. so let's go to the, let's go to the area, let's go to the elevation, the front elevation, and that will show um, the two poles. This looks like the pole on the south side is looks like they're about the same height. So it's in front of the steps. Well, Let's so see. does that mean it was adjusted that the pole on the south side is shorter to begin with to compensate for the difference of the platform heights? Hmm. Can you can you show the drawing, Linda? I'm sorry. Which one? I'm I'm trying not to toggle between <laughs> my work screen and this Zoom screen. So I'm trying to just if you could just put those drawings on the screen again one more time. Okay. Um, Twenty oh nine fourteen, please. LPC set one. Well, that's the one I had open. I mean, you're looking at a different page of it, right? Uh, well, no, I wasn't able to see it, so it, it wasn't a share screen. Oh, let me put it back. Well, Susan, do you know the answer to the question? Uh, I'm, I'm Misha, and I, I honestly oh. don't remember. So that's why I was asking to see the drawing. <laughs> Um, thank you for being patient with me. Hmm, there it is. Not the, not the view I wanted, but it might work. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, which so if we can go, so if we can go to the um, uh, west front elevation, A two hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this one, it's raised, it, it looks like it's very similar in height. 
It, it almost looks like it's in front of the stairs, that these are the stairs behind There are it. stairs. There are stairs behind it, but there is a bit of a, a raise um, mm -hmm. from the sidewalk level that you have to sort of hoist yourself up onto right. um, at the south side. So you can see if you, I don't know if you can press that little um, plus sign at the top one more time and we can just magnify this a little bit and make it easy. Yeah, yeah, maybe one more. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we jumped around. It's all right. Okay, right here, this is fine too. That's fine too. This one's okay. Oh, okay, or we can work with this. So if you could just make that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, and then just bring it down a little bit. Okay. I see what oh, it's doing oh, to dear. me. Well, it's it jumping appears, around. Yeah, uh, it jumps there we are. Yeah, it yeah. So you can see it's a little bit higher, but and and if you had if you had a um, a level um, or or a ruler and you could put it right across, um, you would see line is that the south is a little bit taller um, than than the left than the than the north um, pole. South pole is going to be just a little bit taller. Um, unless you could, unless you can cut down the south pole so they are at the same height. Well, we're trying to keep um, the costs as simple as straightforward as possible, um, and just specify the the stock um, uh, products um, without too much customization. Um, but I can certainly uh, relay to to uh, the museum um, if that's something that the the community board would like the team to consider. Only because I can't guarantee I, yeah, I can't uh, speak on behalf of the museum, obviously. Yeah, only because the facade is so symmetrical. That um, maybe the introduction of even something, you know, modern security wise should also be minor point. Yeah, I think so. Even the gates, you know, the gates come out at a different height because of the stairs. Mm. Exactly. And again, these are not meant to be um, the focus of one's attention um, right. when you look at Ordinarily, the stunning they're, building. It's a big right. building. Right. Right. And and hopefully your your eyes would really be drawn to the to the landmark. Um, and, and less so to any of these um, security upgrades. <laughs> All right, want to go back to the resolution? Yes. I can find it, if it still exists. Okay, is that it? Uh, no, in the paragraph talking about the security installation we didn't mention the poles okay that should be right here yes mm. well i would take away the reference to the gates because that's something that the landmark staff are going to be reviewing um so i instead would ask that the application to be to install two security poles Yes, exactly. With floodlights and security cameras. With exactly. With lighting and security cameras. Yes. Are we satisfied? We are. All right. Would someone care to make a motion? I make a motion. I... Is there Seconded. A All in favor? Aye. 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 We don't hear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Sandra and David, I'm assuming that you also voted aye. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. 
Thank you, everyone. No, we really appreciate it. Evening. We're going to talk about um, Marble Collegiate Church, Middle Collegiate Church. Um, I put yeah, added that to the agenda. It's, it's not the Marble Collegiate Church. No, it's the Middle Collegiate. Sorry, Middle Collegiate Church. Middle Collegiate Church, and also the the building which is adjacent, which is also a landmark. And there's my little agenda. I think it's Isaac Hopper House. Well, this is the. Um, This is a bit of the preservation, uh, the designation report for the Isaac Hopper home or the Van Wyck Mead House, whichever we want to call it. That is a that is a landmark, and was damaged in the fire. This is the building that the uh, women recovering from imprisonment were living. So we have two two damaged landmarks here, one of which is individual, and one of which is a member of the historic district. It seemed to me we should say something. It may which be is which? Beg your pardon? Which, which is which? You said one's individual and one's a part yes, of the history. One, this Mead House is an individual landmark. Uh -huh. The Middle Collegiate Church was not an individual landmark for some unknown reason. But is part of the historic district. Correct. Okay. So it seemed to me, I mean, we may want to say something pretty brief because we don't know a lot here. Um, but it seems to me that we should be on record that every possible effort should be made to uh, save these buildings and restore them. Does that seem that seems the general spirit? Yes. Yeah. Yes, really. So this is an ad hoc resolution. I haven't written anything, but we can write something. A blank document here. Well, given that the church is a major contributor to the, it's the East Village Historic District. Yes. And that its stone facade has been a, um, has stood constant vigil over this historic area for, I don't know, when was the church built? Okay, we can look that up. X number of years. Yeah. That. Oh. Um, are you are you seeing what I'm typing? Because I want, don't want to get no. it. You. No. That's too bad. No, I see the designation report for the Hopper home. Let me stop that share. And where is my, okay, let me start a new share. You're supposed to be able to switch shares, but that doesn't seem to be functioning for me. Okay, how's that? Yeah. Okay, so whereas the Middle Collegiate Church is a major contributor to the East Village Historic District, and whereas the building represents a long and significant history of comfort and compassion. Say something about the fire. I don't know what do you want to say about the fire. Well, just that it was severely damaged. Mm. 
Mm. Well, I don't know. That doesn't support our argument for preservation. Well, we have to, well, maybe I'll say severely, but we need to say that it's been, before we say it's worth preserving, we should say what, what's wrong, right? Can I send you a picture from Twitter? Who wants to send me a picture? Carolyn, um, Evie Grieve has incredible pictures. Oh, I can probably find that. Yeah, if, if you look on Twitter, he's got a whole bunch I'm of- I'm not going to Twitter I'm while we're trying to have this meeting, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I think I can find it in my email, however. All right. <laughs> Uh, that was that's that's the that's that's their light therein lies madness. I would like to say, and whereas the stone facade of the building is still extant or still standing, this um in the tower, the bell, uh, the steeple. I don't know how you would want to describe it. Facade. It's the yeah. facade, but it's also the uh, the tower. It looks like the back wall is also standing. Um, I'm not sure how what looking at this is going to do for us, but hey. Should be there. Why isn't it there? Oh, I'm still on the wrong. Hmm. I was going to find it. There they are. I see they've, they've demolished the building on the corner, he says. Oh, really? Yeah. That was quick. Yeah, well, that's, that's, what, that's what you have to be afraid of. So I'm just looking at his looking at his posts for one that has the best image. Right. Just a little bit. Well, you have to sort of look at it in my email here, I guess. Um, Where is that intersection? It has lost so many of its historic buildings. Yeah, well, right across the street, right? Uh -huh. The terrible fire on Second Avenue and East Seventh Street. I know it's a doomed corner, you know. Well. Is it doomed because of its relationship to St. Mark's and their vision for Second Avenue? <laughs> and, uh, okay, well, there's a little one there. Can you see that? So since that uh, photograph was taken, you're saying the corner building has been that demolished? That been demolished. Totally oh. demolished. And this other little building is, I think it's this one, right? Deborah, do you know? It's kind of hard to see in the photo, but. Um, You're talking the, about the one? The one that's right behind the one that was demolished because it, it fronts on Second Avenue. Yeah, now wasn't that a way that you entered the no. parish hall of the church? That, the, that section is uh, to the east, 
and you can just see the little steeple at the top sticking over the other building. That building still intact. Oh, good. Yeah, the uh, it was just uh, the red brick building on the corner. The other building is okay. You know, it's hard to tell from this photo, but it looks pretty. Yeah, I'm looking at the ones on Twitter um, that he has that show the demolition. Oh, and there's the date, 1892 for the church. Hmm. Yeah, that's what he says. I, I actually have a clip of the designation report, but I'm not quite sure where it is. If we need it, I can fetch it up. Well, you, if you want to say, whereas the building has been a, has, has no, been you know a major we, landmark in the community since its construction in 1892. Say that again. Whereas the building has been a, a major component of the community since its construction in 1892. And I can just double check that fact before we do this. The stone facade and tower of the building are still standing. The tower and steeple. All of their Tiffany windows were demolished for sure. That was so tragic. Mm -hmm. I mean, just awful. But maybe, maybe the Liberty Bell that's up in the tower is okay. It says it was built from 1891 to 92. Yeah, 1892 uh, is good enough in that case. Anything else we need to say here? It was well, you wanted to say something movie. about the fire. Okay. I did, and then if we, you got, want to we got distracted. OK, do you want the architect's name? It was Samuel Reed. Uh, I don't know if we need to put that in. OK. Um, um, whose architect was? Why not? Okay, Samuel Reed. He? Yeah, yeah. Like that? Samuel B. Reed, R E E D. B as in boy? Yes, B as in boy. And then the last name is R E E D. Got it. Okay. So now we want to say something about the fire, or maybe we can say, despite the fire, the stone facade and tower of the building are still standing. Yeah, that's right. good. That's good. Anything else we need to say here? Or is this enough? Well, you want to say something about um, the, the loss of several other buildings at that intersection? Okay. As another reason that this, what, these two should be maintained, should be preserved. Okay. Several buildings have been lost at this intersection. Well, several historic buildings. Okay, it says the church's congregation history goes back nearly 400 years. Um, the 
The church's tower also housed New York's Liberty Bell, which rang out for the inauguration and death of every U.S. president, as well as for September 11th for member. The bell was cast in 1729, according to the New York Times. Its condition was unclear as of Saturday evening. Right. Well, I mean, as important as the bell is, it's sort of not that significant an aspect of maintaining or, yeah. what remains right. of the building. So, yeah, no, it's just... Yeah, somebody's gonna get up there and rescue that bell. Okay, therefore be resolved. Every bell. Mm. As I say not I want to say not to destroy, <laughs> not to, to demolish. To save. To save. It's be positive what remains the mayor is referring it to it as an icon of the uh, east village that's a good quoted. phrase yeah I could say that instead of major component i sort of like that yeah yeah For every effort must be made to save what remains of the building. And, and to restore restore it for future generations, for yeah. present and future generations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Now we need to get something in about this other building. Yeah, Catherine Roth, I just tweeted something or emailed this thing. Can we say something about, we don't know what the condition is of, of the Mead House, do we? Do we know anything about that, Deborah? Deborah's muted, muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can. Yeah, I heard on the radio that there was significant water and smoke damage. And that's why and they had to move the residents out of the building. But that's all I heard. So that doesn't sound like it would lead to demolition. No, the front, the facade looks, looks good to me. It looked intact. But I don't know if it's you know um, compromised in terms of stability. Can, can we incorporate both of these in the same resolution, or do we need two different ones? According to Susan, you can only deal with one topic in a resolution. <laughs> well, it is one topic is in one the topic. sense that it was one fire. Yeah. yeah. Could you say, and the adjacent building, something like that? So to fold it in? I don't know. It's hard. We wrote yeah. it. Oh, maybe we write a separate resolution. What the heck? So whereas. It's got a long name. Mm -hmm. I wonder. How they know it. Ralph and Anne E. Van Wick made <laughs> house mm. later. Isaac T. Hopper home of the women's prison. We've got it all in here, mm. just in the title. Well, would it be of the or now Women's Prison Association? I'm just reading from the designation report. 
Yeah, it was it was named, uh, you know, early on to be after Isaac uh, Hopper. It's Hopper, not Hooper. Yeah. Is that um, Isaac Hopper, the abolitionist? Yes. Oh, not uh, Hooper, but Hopper. Yes, it is. Um, it was named after him after he died because he was very interested in, in his daughter, were very interested in you know, women who had been in prison and trying to help them. So uh, I don't know what year that was that it was named uh, the Hopper House, the Hopper Home. Okay, I'm just gonna quote a little bit out of this re designation mm. report. Mm -hmm. spell. All right, um, what I wanna say here. Um, oh, it's an individual landmark. I guess we should say that, right? Right. And we should say up there, we should say, I think we did say it was a con contributing building, right? To the... Well, but it's not a contributing building. The hopper is not because no. it's an individual landmark. I know, I'm, I'm going back to say, yeah, we said that this church is a, Part of the East Village. Okay. Whereas huh. oh, they heard it twice. They weren't too anxious to do this. So they finally in two thousand nine, I think. Designated in two thousand nine. What happened here? Do the it said they heard it in 1996. I think it's, um, it, I think it was one of those um, 95 backlog buildings. It must have been. Interesting. And that finally made it. Yeah. Well, good unlike good. so many others. Unlike so many others, yes. But we don't, we never give up. <laughs> the Don Quixote's of the preservation world. <laughs> And uh, we want to say something about whereas uh, the um, public face or the facade of the building is a well-preserved example of the Greek revival style. Mm -hmm. I wonder when it became it said when it became a home for the these for these women. Eighteen seventy four. Mm. Building was purchased in eighteen seventy four by the Women's Prison Association. Yeah. The Isaac T. Hopper home opened in 1874 and is considered the world's oldest halfway house for girls and window, women. So I think we should say that. Yes. Association. Was it a was it designated in two thousand and nine? Yes. Oh, because you you said nineteen ninety. <laughs> that won't do. <laughs> I was dreaming on. Thank you. 
was purchased in 1844 by the Women's Prison Association and is considered the world's oldest halfway house for girls and women released from prison. So they're good guys. Mm. Anything else we want to say about this? if it said anything more about the architecture here. Some of these reports do go on, don't they? They're interesting, but they don't get you to what you need to, for a resolution. Now here it is. Yeah, maybe we said enough, do you think? Yeah. So then we could do the same we did before, therefore, be it resolved, every effort must be made to save what remains. Mm -hmm. There it is. Although I would say in this case, for continued use by the Women's Prison Association. <laughs> I don't know if you would want to include anything. The this neighborhood has lost so many Greek revival buildings in the past twenty years, or actually more than that. I mean, you know, it's like Trinity Lower East Side Lutheran was listed as one of the finest examples of Greek revival architecture, <laughs> and it was demolished in what the sixties, seventies. Yeah, and this is one uh, of four. St. George's was demolished. Well, let's see. I think I think we might have said enough about its Greek revivalness. I think this is sufficient. Okay. We're just expressing a quick community board opinion here. Okay. So it's I just guess, a thought. there aren't that many Greek revival things left. No, that's for sure. Did you need to say something about the fire damage for the second one? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Good idea. Whereas What do you want to say? Can you describe what you think we know about this? Uh, whereas, uh, the whereas the interior has suffered water, you what did you say? Water and, water and smoke. Smoke. Yeah. smoke damage. Do you want to mention the fact that the residents had to be removed temporarily or had well, to that's be pretty obvious? <laughs> relocated. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, shall we uh, approve these? I guess we should do two separate votes. I'm sure it'll be unanimous. <laughs> okay. Let's have a motion for the uh, Middle Collegiate Church. Motion for the Middle Collegiate Church. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> now let's have one for the Van Wick Mead House. The motion that Thank we, you, David. David did it. Okay. Can a resolution on this one? Um, a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, guys. There's a little amazing here. Thank you, David. And thank you, Sam. Now, was this kosher to have to discuss without it being on our agenda? I'll say that again. Was this matter 
kosher for us to discuss and do a resolution on when it wasn't on our agenda? Absolutely not. <laughs> However, I'm going to uh, invoke the emergency provisions. Um, we obviously this could not have been put on our agenda because it just happened. And if we waited to vote on it for another month, it might be too late. Got it. Yeah, so, we'll be very lucky. <laughs> I think I'll get away with it. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I'm sure this is, is this, you know, something that everybody in the community board would agree with. Mm -hmm. It'll get unanimous approval. All right, so all we need to do now is adjourn. Uh, does anybody object to adjourning at this moment? No. Nope. So we are adjourned. <laughs> Thank Bye. you, Linda. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Everybody stay safe and well. This was, this was kind of, kind of an interesting one, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs>